No. Okay, well, Mark does that. I'll uh, quick reminder that the Padlet's still open. The Padlet is going to stay open after the session uh, as well. So the, the Padlet is there forever. You can bookmark that. And if you want to return to discussion or return to a couple of points that um, were made, uh, feel free to uh, look at that whenever you want. But the conversation continues after we finish today. Um, I will just give Mark a minute to get himself set up. Um, you ready okay, to go? I think I think I'm pretty pretty good to go. In that case, we will uh, end off uh, well finish up with our final talk, which is by Mark Wilkinson, uh, my colleague at Nottingham Trent University, and he's going to talk about using YouTubers and Twitch streamers for inspiration in our team. So, in okay, thanks, Lawrence. Um, okay, it's a real pleasure to be here speaking in front of all of you today. Um, it's been a really lovely workshop and I'm really happy to bring my small contribution to the table. So my name is Mark. Um, I'm a lecturer in maths at Nottingham Trent University. Um, I just arrived here six months ago, more or less at the start of the pandemic. Before I was here, um, I was postdocing in Paris, in New York and also in Edinburgh. And at the moment, I've really only got about five years of teaching experience under my belt. Um, so I'm a relative whippersnapper when it comes to, to classroom teaching. But whenever I can, I like to use um, elements of technology in teaching if I believe they have some didactic value. And I think one thing I'd like to share with you today is, as the title suggests, um, the practices of YouTubers and Twitch streamers um, for us as educators in mathematics, what is it they're doing well? What is it they're doing really well? And how might we try to build that into our practice moving forward? Okay, so let's get this moving. Okay, so what can you see here on the screen? To explain what a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer is, what you can see here is one of my favorite streamers, uh, Seth, um, playing a game co called Magic the Gathering. And he's doing so in a piece of software whose virtues I will sing about in this talk. It's really a small love letter really to a piece of software called Streamlabs. So Seth here is using Streamlabs to live stream this card game, Magic the Gathering, and effectively educate his viewers, of whom there are thousands, how to play the game. Uh, you'll see there are several elements on the screen. I'll break that down um, as the talk moves forward. But um, Streamlabs is the piece of software that he is using to make contact with his audience. And you'll see, you'll see much more of that um, in just a few minutes time. Okay, so this talk is pretty short. What is it that I really want to, to talk about? So really three main things. I'd like to talk about the hardware that some of these Twitch streamers and YouTubes use along with the software that they use to really reach uh, and grab their audience. Um, it's quite a dynamic um, space where people are creating and people are constantly innovating, coming up with new ideas. And I think it's really interesting to use um, Twitch in particular as a window into good practice for, for communicating with our audiences um, online. And then just as an overarching theme, just thinking about things abstractly, thinking about how to use um, these good practices in the teaching and, learn, uh, teaching and learning mathematics um, online. Okay, so as you might imagine, none of my students is going to be logging on to watch me play video games. Rather, they'll be logging on to watch me do some good old fashioned mathematics. Um, and you'll be using lots of different resources in the meantime. So you might notice, I hope you can see quite clearly that I am at the bottom of the screen. My feed is superimposed onto whatever it is I'm using in the background. And this piece of software, Streamlabs, that I mentioned at the very start is very, very good at manipulating and somehow pulling together all the various resources you'll be using. So you'll notice in particular, I'm representing Nottingham Trent University at the top. That's a little widget that you can turn on and off at will. So you may well find something a little more instructive in your classes to, to use there. But of course, during your classes, you'll be doing various different things. You might want to toggle on the, the lecture notes that you were using in the, the previous week's lecture, highlight something in particular in the lecture notes in a non clumsy manner. Similarly, you might want to bring up this week's tutorial or seminar sheet, focus in on a question and use that as a way by which to enter a discussion into how to solve the, the, the problem under consideration. 
And you might also look to use um, solution sheets and talk students through solution sheets. As you might see here, this looks a little bit like the kind of thing that Steve um, Watson was talking about before. This is just a, a solution sheet to, to a problem uh, sheet that I had um, last year. Um, made in Microsoft Word, which is a fantastic piece of software if you have a graphics tablet um, to, to hand draw mathematics. Um, and also one particularly useful feature which you can toggle on and toggle off is a chat feature. So all I've done is pull this off the Zoom chat at the moment and you can do this with other platforms. You can do it with Microsoft Teams, um, Skype, whichever other chat functionality you might have. And in this way, you can, at least for me, have a, a dynamic interaction with students, especially if they're on the shyer side, they don't like to speak up, they don't like their um, video uh, displayed, and they'd rather keep their, their questions anonymous. But these are things that you can, can toggle on uh, and toggle off. Similarly, um, hopefully this will work. Let's just see if technology is kind to me today. Okay. You can also, and someone raised this before about PowerPoint being ever so slightly awkward to use with regards to inking. So what I'm doing just now is I'm using a, a graphics tablet, nothing too expensive. And all I'm doing is looking at a slide. Here I am, I'm talking to my students, introducing Fred Home Integral Equations of the Second Kind, which is certainly what I'll be doing with my students this um, semester. And you can write quite nice and cleanly on these slides, not too much of a problem. And it seems as though the thickness, um, one, one or two people mentioned about the thickness this morning um, of PowerPoint with regards to, to writing on the slides, seems to be doing not too, too bad a job. So I hope you agree that all of this so far has been relatively seamless. It's a matter of clicks from moving from one thing to the next. I'm not dragging windows across the screen. It's all quite nice. And the way that I'm doing this is via Streamlabs, this wonderful piece of free software that most Twitchers and YouTubers use to organize either synchronous or asynchronous content. Okay, so I've used the words YouTube and Twitch. I don't think it, I need to comment on the most famous video repository in the world, YouTube, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 10 years. Twitch, however, especially amongst academics is perhaps lesser known. So what is Twitch? Well, it's a company owned by Amazon. And quite sim simply, it's a live streaming platform on which streamers are watched playing video games. Now you might wonder how such a thing exists and how it propagates and how it's profitable, but we're not going to get into that. It's really the numbers that I'm interested in. So with regards to people producing content on this, um, this platform, there were 3.9 million unique streamers um, active in February 2020 um, this year. And on average, there are about 140 million users, people who lo log in to watch these videos um, every month. And people who stream on Twitch, many of them, this is their career. They do this to get paid via various avenues of monetization. And of course, they are trying to do everything they possibly can to maximize their audiences, maximize their impact so they can survive and stay afloat. So there's a kind of Darwinian um, process going on with regards to Twitch that the best rise to the top and the, the low fall and, and fail. So for this reason, I think as a resource for us just to dip into and see what people are doing, it's a really fantastic place to go. So I, I warmly encourage any of you who is interested to go to Twitch um, in your free time and explore what people are doing there. But with regards to resources, I'd say um, YouTube is better for um, thinking about asynchronous content, pre-recorded material. There's already a lot of good mathematics material, in fact, on YouTube, which you can access at your leisure for, for some inspiration for your classes. But with regards to synchronous activities, so streaming activities, Twitch is really where to go. It's really where it's at. Um, so that's the divide in terms of the platforms, both asynchronous and synchronous um, resources. Okay. I'm just going to introduce one case study of a guy whom I particularly admire. So this chap here, Saffron Olive, um, that's his Twitch handle. He is known for playing this uh, card game that I previously showed, Magic the Gathering. He's employed by a company known as MTG Goldfish um, just to play Magic um, uh, and have people watch him play Magic. So in some sense, MTG Goldfish is playing the role of the university. So universities are paying us to do mathematics. And what this chap has been doing for years and years and years um, has been accruing a large audience. He's got about 200,000 subscribers, which implies his reach actually is far greater than any of ours, ours sadly, can be as um, academics. But what he's been doing for years is producing both 
asynchronous content in the form of YouTube videos and synchronous content by streaming on Twitch once or twice a week. And his schedule actually mirrors quite closely the, the schedule of an academic in terms of only producing during the working week and the frequency with which he produces these videos. So I think he's quite a good case study to, to look at, look at his content, to see how he manages his, his um, affairs and gets really good stuff um, online to, to inspire his audience. Now, mirror, uh, my approach that I'm taking here in this talk kind of mirrors what he has been doing for several years. So if you just have a quick look at this still frame, you'll notice there are several elements to the page that I've highlighted. Some of you might not, not like it, but I find it's been helpful teaching so far. Um, there's a little webcam output at the bottom, so you can both see the content behind, which in our case would be mathematics, and also a face, uh, so you get some facial expressions, um, which hopefully makes the video a little bit more engaging. You get the option, as I mentioned before, to put in widgets or things like chat boxes, which I think are a fantastic way by which to interact with your students in real time. Um, and also, if you want to try to keep the process anonymous, I think that's a really, a really fantastic additional tool to help keep everything nice and dynamic. And here, you know, the guy's keeping track of who's winning, who's losing. You might look to put in poll information here. You might look to put in future questions, whatever it is. I mean, really, the, your imagination is, is the limit here with regards to what you can include um, in the stream using um, Streamlabs. So overall, what's the connection with teaching and learning maths online? Well, I claim that these um, repositories, both Twitch and um, YouTube, are really good resources for people who are professional. They've been doing this for 10, 10 years, five, 10 years. So unlike us who are just really getting up and running, these people have been doing it for a long time and getting paid to do this for a long time. So you can go there, have a look at both asynchronous and synchronous content and see really what the, the standard is uh, for many young people observing these things. Um, these people are, are really good, they're really dynamic. Many of them have really nice personalities. Um, so again, it's good to get an idea as to what hooks um, students. Um, more appropriately to what I'm going to say towards the end of the talk, if you d dig in a little bit more deeply, you can see quite clearly there's a modern software and hardware framework that is super appropriate, really nice, in which to, to roll out mathematics both in real time and um, have uh, material pre-recorded. And for those of you who are really brave and bold uh, and to whom it matters, if you work with these kind of platforms and corresponding software, there's additional opportunity for you to really engage via social media, to advertise your lectures on social media to your students and to accrue some followers along the way and thereby kind of keeping the bond that you have with your students as nice and friendly as you might hope it to be. And I suppose the reason why I'm using Twitch and YouTube for inspiration in my own teaching is I'm adopting an axiom here, of course, a naive axiom, but the axiom which are called the Talmo axiom is that undergraduates that we're teaching now spent their formative years consuming content on platforms such as YouTube and Twitch. So even subconsciously, they've got standards. They've been seeing things year after year and whether we like it or not, we have a bar perhaps to reach and just dipping our toe in the water now might help us understand you know, the levels that we need to perhaps hit in order to, to engage with students. But of course there's a danger. You don't want to look like the guy who's trying to be cool to students by using modern technology. So you have to be a little bit subtle about it and how you employ this, this kind of um, stuff moving forward. Um, so that's something very, very important to be mindful of. So going back to my favorite streamer, Saffron Olive, just keeping an idea as to how he keeps his schedule. One thing that he does that I think is lovely is that he produces short videos every week, maybe less than five minutes in length, that advertises what's coming ahead for the week so that students can maybe get their, their mind in place as to what's coming next. That's really lovely. And he accompanies that with slightly, ever so slightly longer videos of about 50 minutes, which for us might be something like lectures um, or perhaps less, depending on what you're considering doing moving forward. But really, where he shines comes um, in Twitch streams. The way in which he engages his audience using chat functionality, also polls he uses to, to use in, uh, suggestions and interact with his audience is another really positive thing. And he pulls this all together using Streamlabs. So I'll see if I can just very briefly towards the end, see if I can share Streamlabs here just now. So Streamlabs at the moment, which I hope you can see, is this um, client and it's free. The learning curve is very low for it and there are hundreds of YouTube videos available with beef tutorials to help you get up and running. 
It's essentially, as I said, just a content manager. It allows you to pull lots of different sources into one place um, and have a nice seamless um, process without dragging too many things around and, and have things look quite, quite nice and slick. Um, okay, let me return very quickly to my original screen. Here we go. Um, okay, what hardware would you need just very quickly to finish up? Well, it's very much up to you how much you're willing to spend, although you can, you can do this relatively inexpensively. Obviously having screens, hopefully everyone's got screens. I got mine from a charity shop, two of them for a total of £15, so it can be quite cheap. Having a good quality camera is a good way to connect with your students. Having grainy photo, uh, photo quality is not good. They, they want to see, see things in good quality. And along with that, having a good microphone is quite a good practice too. So your voice is clean, clear, crisp, and there's not much, not much muffling going on. Good lighting can also accompany a, a really positive streaming experience. And if you're super fancy, although I don't recommend this one per se, getting a stream deck to additionally manage your content. So you can maybe have a little look online as to what a stream deck really is. Graphics tablets, additionally for mathematicians, really good. Wacom is by far um, the leader in the field. I warmly recommend what they do. And if you're super keen doing what I'm doing just now, having your video superimposed on the screen, a green screen is also, also really good to have as part of your kit. Software, again, this is a love letter to Streamlabs. It's free, download it, start playing with it, see what it can do for you. I can't recommend it uh, highly or one way or enough. Go there uh, and try it out. Here you can look back to see a list of um, uh, software that I myself use um, from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and as I said, claimed before, this is not expensive. This is something you can do by going to charity shops, even going on eBay and Gumtree, sourcing some of the pieces of kit that you might need to really optimize your, your teaching. And then just very quickly to finish up, who else is doing this? There are some mathematicians out there who are aware of the Twitch space um, and are using them for inspiration. One chap here is Matt Solomon at Bridgewater State University. This is his details. You can perhaps see what he's been doing. And this is rather recent for me. So I attended a really wonderful um, online event yesterday from the ICMS. It was on using the internet, using um, online space to deliver um, engagement events. And this was uh, led by, in the UK, the pretty well-known Katie Steckles and Ben Sparks. Their event is fantastic. If you ever get the chance to, to do it, sign up, you won't regret it. It's really, really fantastic. So there are people out there thinking along similar lines. Um, it's a really exciting time to explore these technologies. And I think with that whirlwind 13 minutes or 14 minutes out of the way, I'll thank you for your attention. Good luck for the upcoming semester. And yep, any questions? That's great. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, you, you've already answered a couple of, uh, uh, of questions because uh, I'm... I was aware of Streamlabs, but uh, I was always concerned about the learning curve. So given your endorsement, I think I'm going to look back at it again, uh, sure. at, at very least. So I think this was quite an intense talk and there's obviously quite a lot in it, but this is pre-recorded. So you can look back, see what I was talking about and try to connect the dots by yourself in, in, your, in your free time if this is something you want to pursue. But yes, Streamlabs is really a doddle, not, not tricky at all to use. So uh, a question that has come in is, um, is it right that it's built on uh, OBS? Because that's correct, somebody... OBS. That's right, it's OBS Streamlabs, that's correct. Yeah. So if somebody was using a, uh, a Mac, they could still use that as a kind of a that's, basic? That's, right? that's right. I believe that Streamlabs itself is Windows only, um, so yeah. that would be a barrier to Mac users. Um, but yes, there are alternative solutions for those who, for those who use Mac, that's right. And... Um, are there any advantages over Streamlabs itself over OBS or is that something you haven't considered? That's actually not something I've explored. That's a pretty good question. All I can say is that Streamlabs really met my needs um, and I don't even use everything that it, it has to offer. But um, yeah, I can't, I can't really off, uh, offer a good answer to that. I'd be happy if anyone in the chat um, has, has ideas on that. The, um, there's also been a few questions specifically about uh, Twitch. And uh, do you know, does it have uh, capabilities of uh, live subtitles and captioning, for example? Um, that is also a good question. Um, 
I can't quite say, but what, what I can say is that you can use Streamlabs through um, Microsoft Teams, for instance. This is something you can just share your screen. So Streamlabs, what it effectively does is it prints out in a single screen um, something that you're, you want to show your, your class. And then you can simply share that screen via Microsoft Teams or whichever other platform you're using. And I believe the functionality for um, subtitles is available in these platforms. So that's maybe something that could be, could be look, looked into. But um, with regards to Twitch, there might be some issues if you want to live stream. You need to make sure you do it in the correct uh, sub channel. It has to be educational. And I have heard stories of some people having their Twitches pulled down simply because according to those who run Twitch, you're doing things which don't align with their principles. So you need to be ever so slightly careful with that. I think for me, the best marriage is Streamlabs alongside things like Microsoft Teams or Zoom. That's, that's really where you can avoid these kind of um, issues um, conflicting with the content providers. And can um, uh, Twitch content, can that be uh, like pre-recorded as well? Or, uh, or is that just for synchronous? Uh, I believe it can be pre-recorded. I don't think there's anything stopping you doing that. Um, I think the, the main point is the, um, interactivity is the focus on Twitch. So if you're just uploading a video and there's no interaction, again, you may get some of the moderators saying, listen, this is just a video. Why is there no active interaction? Um, but I, I don't think there's anything stopping you whatsoever from, from doing that. But I have to say, with regards to pre-recorded content, Streamlabs, there's a record button. You can hit it and it just captures your screen with all the bits and pieces um, all pulled together. And then you can simply upload immediately without any further editing to you know, your favorite um, university um, portal. Um, a, a bit more of a, a technical question. Now, you highlighted about the different kit, uh, for example, um, and there was a question, do you have any recommendations in terms of size of green screen? Um, I suppose the bigger the better. Um, I think what dictates <laughs> the size is um, how close your camera is to the, the green screen itself. Um, they are pretty inexpensive things. I mean, you can pick them up on sites such as Amazon for a 10 or, or, or less, they're not a lot. Even nice ones that come in a, a case that retract. So you can just pull the handle up and then it, it locks the green screen into place. You can pick these up for 40 quid. So I know that money for some people might be tight um, and, that, and also money and budgets in universities is not obviously overflowing just now, but you can pick these items up relatively inexpensively, especially if you go on, um, eBay or, or Amazon and look to buy secondhand. Okay, great. Thank you. One, once again, the, the Sydney has got a few uh, comments now coming in in the, um, in the chat as well about uh, uh, things that are coming through in terms of OBS and Mac users and everything else. And uh, I think there's lots there uh, for people to, to kind of revisit. So thank you very much, Mark. No, thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone.